So man versus machine, it's been a question since the beginning of the industrial revolution and the ability to automate repetitive tasks has made our lives and our jobs a lot better. Now welding with robots has been done for a long time, but traditionally those robots were large and they had to be in their own room to be able to run and they took a lot of expertise to be able to operate and program. Well, the technology that's changing all of that is the Cobot. These are smaller, specialized robots. They run on a welding table that's similar to what I have here in my shop, and they can be programmed by physically moving the arm around and entering settings on a tablet, and it requires very little expertise and training, as you'll see in this video. I've wanted to learn more about Cobots for quite a while, and I got the chance to travel out to Hirebotics in Nashville, Tennessee, and get my hands on one and learn a little bit what all this technology is about. This is Matt, he is the co-founder at Hirebotics here. So how did you guys get started? So we got started in 2015 doing anything and everything around fully integrated machine tending. Um, in late 2018, we got started on welding and kind of turned the corner in 20 and here we are today, we do cobalt welding, cobalt cutting. Before I traveled out there, Matt drew up this little kit and had them cut out by John W. McDougal. That's their material supplier, and he sent a couple out to me so that I could try it out and see how long it would take to weld by hand. The first one took about 15 minutes, but I was learning the part and moving a camera around, so by number two, it was game on. And I was moving at a pretty good pace here. Now there's no doubt that a robot's gonna be able to move faster, but having a baseline number is gonna be nice to know whether the time in programming is gonna be offset. It took me about eight and a half minutes. Now at Hirebotics, they weren't programming this, they actually saved it for me to program, and I didn't realize that. So I would be the one programming it when I get out there. Now it didn't take long after I showed up before Matt and the team was walking me through some exercises on this little training piece that they have. So in general, what we're gonna do is I'm just gonna show you how to get around this part. So we're gonna mm -hmm. start by teaching a point on this corner. So grab that green button. I like to use it like a pencil mm -hmm. because if I can use it like a pencil without really any pressure there, I get really fine control. Okay. And don't be afraid to move the ruler. You're not gonna break it. All Think right. about your torch angles and stuff, so whatever push angle you want, click the blue button. Just click it, don't hold it. Now they developed this app just for their uh, integrated system here, and you enter each point and each segment, and they show up in a list here in the tablet, which is pretty cool, because you know right where you are, you don't have to deal with any complicated pendants or things like that. So watch as it runs through, you can see it moving through the segments like songs in a playlist, and it's just that simple. And if something doesn't go right, you can delete or modify it right from there. I never got tired of watching it come to life after programming it and follow the motion that's in there. And it's just amazing to me that you could do this so simply. And you can even incorporate different patterns like this weave around the corner there. And that's just a press of a button to add that or modify how much it does it. So it's pretty cool. Now it's time to get started on this part. Now for this, I'm gonna weld this main tube in first and then pause and wait for operator input to assemble it and it'll finish all the welding. So moving the arm around was a little bit awkward at first, just a different motion than I've done before, but it didn't take long to get used to it and record the points on each piece. It was nice compared to other robots I've worked with years ago in my engineering career because if it bumps into something, it senses that and it doesn't damage anything. So you don't have to be too worried about making these dry runs. So once that was set, it was time to start uh, programming the tack welds on assembly. And this was straightforward. Just point it where you want it to tack and there's a tack mode and that's basically all. Just like we have range of motion with our joints, robots have a range of motion as well, and I had started too close to the robotic arm, so I couldn't make the whole run on that outside corner. We moved it over, and it turns out that you can just reprogram the whole coordinate system, and it kept everything that was done, and I could keep on going with the program. Now creating this program as my first attempt took about an hour, not counting the break that we took for tacos. But talking to Matt, an experienced programmer would be able to do this in about 20 or 30 minutes. 
So that's really not bad at all. It'll be interesting to see how it works. Here we go. So the first weld right here only took about 10 seconds to actually complete before it paused for assembly. And I brought up, you know, if you do it this way, that means that the robot is gonna be sitting idle, not welding anything while you assemble it. And they said, yeah, well, a lot of customers will actually put a divider in the table or a rotating table or some other system so you can have it welding on one assembly while the operator's assembling the other piece. So that's a way that you keep it running and keep the operator safe all at the same time because with a cobot, it can operate in the vicinity of people and if it bumps into somebody or uh, something, it'll just stop in a safe way. One segment had an intermittent weld, and when I did it manually, it took some time to actually measure and mark out. And you could use a template or something like that in production, but uh, in this case, to program it, it was still just two points, and you put in the parameters for the skip weld, and it's ready to go. So if you remember at the beginning of the video, it took me eight and a half minutes to assemble, tack, and weld one of these out. Now the robot runtime turned out to be almost exactly two minutes, not including the pause for assembly. 91 seconds of that was actual Archon weld time. So if you consider about 20 minutes to program a part like this, that means that you have to weld five of them before you've made up for the time and anything beyond there is a gain, not to mention it takes a lower skill level to run this than it does to actually weld out parts, plus it's a lot less exhausting. Now if you set up to have two of these run at a time, then you're just about at the two minutes a piece and the robot can keep moving as you alternate between assemblies, and then you only have to weld three of them before it's made up for its time. So in the past where it's been a huge expense and endeavor to set up a part for automated welding, here it's really flexible and it can make sense for short runs, especially since you can just pick up an off the shelf unit like this. It was interesting for me to learn that they actually keep these units in stock and so you can order one up and it ships next day and when you unbox it, it has everything you need to get started welding, power supply, the welding table, everything, even a, a gas flow meter and you can integrate it with other automated equipment if you have that or even get one set up with a plasma cutter like this so if you're cutting odd shapes that wouldn't sit on a traditional gantry table but you need to cut say holes in a tank or whatnot you can get a system with a plasma cutter on it. I thought this was really cool. It was just a basic circle that was programmed, and then it's following the profile of this. It's pretty fun to watch. So at the end of the day, could I outweld a robot? Well, if you count for some programming time, I can keep pace for a couple of pieces, but beyond that, no, there's not a chance. Hey, thanks a ton for having me out. I appreciate it. Yeah, thanks for coming out and spending a day with us.